Joining me now to talk about that interview are Armin Georgian, our international affairs editor. Hi, Armin. Also joining us from the UK, Jim Shields, who teaches French studies at the University of Warwick. And I'd like to start off with you, uh, Mr. Shields. Thanks for joining us. Now, before we talk about what the president said, um, as I mentioned before, he's breaking here with precedent to uh, give this interview today. And this comes after a very popular prime minister, Edouard Philippe, was shown the door. Is this Macron reclaiming the limelight? Well, we need to remember that this is a president who has had two full years of crisis, uh, rolling rail strikes, the gilets jaunes, paralyzing protests over pension reform, then a devastating pandemic. He wants to use this moment to draw a line under all of that and move forward, picking up again some of the impetus he had in his first year. With just 21 months of his mandate left, realistically one more useful year there's a feeling of now or never for Macron to get his presidency back on track. He's reshuffled his government and he's now set his course for the rest of his term of office. He has played his final hand, but it seems to me far from certain that that will be enough to bring a new elan to his presidency and to boost his re-election pro prospects. Turning uh, now to you, uh, Armin, uh, France, of course, uh, has done um, relatively well during this uh, crisis, this coronavirus crisis, compared to some of its neighbours. But at home, uh, President Macron has uh, faced a lot of criticism, for example, some saying the country should have been uh, put in lockdown sooner. Um, the government's been accused of not being straightforward about masks, etc. Now, though, Macron saying that the government is ready, should there be a second wave? Let's take a listen. We will be ready. It's been prepared under the authority of the Prime Minister, with the Minister of Health and all the right services so that we have the right services in the right quantity. Because we now know, in a period of extreme crisis, just how much we get through. It was a lot more than in all the projections, over ten times more. We have the stocks and provisions, which are secure. And we have the organization on the ground which will let us handle a fresh outbreak if it happens. So, Armin, tell us more about what the president had to say uh, about the, the pandemic. Well, well, first of all, I think on the point of, you know, how well did France do, I think it's important to underline that the lockdown came uh, quite a lot too late and there was mixed messaging on masks, there was mixed messaging on uh, people being encouraged to vote in municipal elections but also being told, well, don't congregate outside in parks, even though it was a sunny weekend. Um, so, you know, when we say France did relatively well, I mean, it, I think Macron only did very slightly better than Italy or Spain or the UK or the United States, but 30,000 deaths uh, from COVID, it's, it's not doing well. Um, so he's clearly... Uh, you know, lost a lot of credibility before that because of that. And at the height of the crisis, there were, you know, 700 odd, 600, 700 deaths every day in France. Um, so that is something that, he, you know, his this mandate, his presidential mandate will be uh, remembered for. Um, in terms of being ready, well, of course, there is now an awareness of uh, the risks. So, you know, people are generally, from what I've seen, uh, wearing masks quite a lot in closed spaces, but there's still the problem of, you know, pe being outside, you know, bars and restaurants, outside areas where there's uh, people really crowded in, uh, into around one table and not being spaced out. I mean, I was just watching yesterday in, in Montmartre. Um, I don't see how, uh, you know, uh, f how one can really avoid a slight uptick in the, in the um, in the epidemic, which actually Macron said it's it's already happening, which is why he's making masks. Uh, uh, he wants to make them obligatory from August uh, the first. Uh, but um, there is also recognition in the French government that a, a general lockdown would have absolutely disastrous consequences for French society and for the French economy at a time when we're expecting nearly a million more uh, unemployed, uh, registered unemployed people as it is by the spring of next year. So um, he was sort of trying to reassure, I think, the French public uh, that in this interview, 
that there would only be localized lockdowns at most, perhaps specific areas within cities uh, and kind of very local measures that there would not be uh, the same kind of lockdown as there was before. Turning back to you, um, Mr. Shields, just to stay on the economy, because, of course, uh, this uh, pandemic, this crisis has had a huge impact on the French economy. And uh, Macron reminded the French that an estimated 800,000 jobs will be lost between now and April 2021. He announced measures to make it easier to employ uh, young people, because, of course, youth unemployment is a, a particular problem. These are very uncertain times. Do you think the president did a good job of reassuring the French people that he's got a, a long term? term economic plan? Well, he set out clearly enough the priorities, economic recovery, job creation for the young especially, uh, as he put it, the priority of priorities, uh, a move to national self-sufficiency and production where required. Um, certain reforms that are picked up again, like pensions reform and the environment. So he set all of this out. The problem for Macron isn't so much what he says, it's how that's received. It's the polls that follow measuring how far he has convinced those watching and listening. That's the real issue here, confidence, trust. And on those, Macron has been running low. He'll be hoping to have struck the right notes here and also, by the way, that his new prime minister, with his strong, personal, down-to-earth, engaging touch, might bring him some connectedness, if I can put it like that, some popular connectivity back by association. Just to pick up on that, the, the new Prime Minister, Jean Castex, he's giving a speech <laughs> at the National Assembly uh, tomorrow. Um, Macron was elected positioning himself as neither being on the left nor right. And yet with this appointment and other appointments in his new government, isn't he now clearly positioning himself on, on the right? Yes, I don't think there's any doubt. He himself denied this in the interview we've just heard. Uh, he denied that he'd moved to the right and said he was still in that uh, original position he'd occupied in 2017, both right and left. It's clear that Macron's support base is now drawn largely from former conservative voters of Sarkozy and Fillon. These are the voters Macron most wants to reassure. Centre-left voters saw him into power, then many deserted him when his policy agenda came to rest firmly on the centre-right. And I think we can see already here the Macron strategy for the first round of the presidential elections in 2022 consolidate the centre-right base, then in the runoff, if he gets there, look to widen the embrace to centre-left and green voters. That's the formula, I think, that we can see written across both the government reshuffle and his address today. And President Macron, in this uh, rare TV interview, uh, recognised the fact that he, he admitted to not having been able to, to bring the French uh, people together. What did you make of his tone overall? Because in some of those particularly early speeches during the lockdown, he was accused of, uh, of being very arrogant. Um, did you find him more humble? How do you think French people will be reacted to, to his tone, his approach today? Well, I don't think there was a lot there that was new. There was a mea culpa, uh, to a certain degree, uh, a surface mea culpa. He got some things wrong. As you rightly say, he'd failed to unite the nation. He suggested that part of his problem had been wanting to go too far, too fast. He didn't really engage with one of the, the central problems that he has, which is how he's perceived personally. And also, in terms of the bigger picture, he didn't offer any change of course, any change of direction. What he offered was a change of style. We've heard this before, really. We keep the direction as it is. We keep going where we want to go, 
but I'll consult more widely. I'll be more a more of a listening president. This we've heard this from Macron since the Gilets Jaunes. So it'll be interesting to see whether the polls found that a, a persuasive message in today's address. All right. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Jim Shields joining us there from the UK. And thank you to Armin in the studio here with me.